Hi everyone! Welcome to Pokemon. Hi. It's Pokemon I'm time. Hi. He's Mon. Hello. Catch us all. It's Pokemon Hello. time. Pokemon. Hello. I'm Hello. Jonathan Pokemon. <laughs> My father and invented catch. Pokemon. I'm all. <laughs> and I'm a mall. Catch them all. <laughs> That's a terrible name. Catch them all. Uh, uh, catch Jamal is your name. Um, okay, I'm just gonna switch over the game. This 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 needs no introduction. Episode six. Um, Where are you at, white boy? Tell us what you did last time, and then we'll finish it out by checking your party and seeing if we need to make any updates. If you want to see what I did last time, we can simply watch this cutscene. Previously, I departed daycare in Route Five for the next destination. I'm not even telling you who I dropped off there. And then I went to Celadon City, and I got the tea from this lady, and then I gave the tea to the guy to let me into Saffron City, and then I came all the way back to Lavender Town for ghost fights, because we got the Sylph Scope from the grass Pokemon. Mm. I just realized why Sylph Scope sounds so weird to me. It's because it's very, very close to Milf Scope. Anyways. I got two of those oh, yeah. already implanted. <laughs> you got it. You got wait, go back to your Pokemon party. All right, so you got Doduo. Uh, yeah. I also realized the entire last episode, uh, the Google browser never refreshed, so it just showed my old Pokemon. I don't I don't think it did, because I think I watched it. Refresh. Oh really? Maybe I maybe I was yeah. watching the wrong episode. Right, so so Pidgeot is out and you've got a Doduo. Yep. Okay. Um, we've got your Gyarados, we've got your Graveler, we've got your, it's still a Machop, right? Machop, yep. Your got Growlithe, it. and we've got, your, uh, oh, I did, I, <clears throat> I did off-air Moonstone Barney to, um, Knitter King. <laughs> don't even, Will. don't even. Will. Nitto King. Nido King. Nidoran. Not even close. Nidoran, Nido King. Uh, anyways, I Moonstone it only because the guy told me if you do it before level 22, uh, Nido King learns a better move than Nidoran, Nidoran does at 22. So they said to do this it. Is, um, now you're making me overly was... cautious about saying this Pokemon's name. You're the it worst. was Halucha, right? That's who we're talking about, Halucha? Uh, I went to SaintHalucha.com, and the website actually told me to do it. They had some really inappropriate words on there. One in particular, but... <laughs> All right. Um, let me go here. Let me go here. Here. Um, here. Yeah. Here. Here. Girl. Move. And here. Okay. Oh, it did update. You wow. Are yeah, maybe maybe yeah. I was watching oh. the wrong episode. I may or may I, not play I, these episodes on my work laptop to get those views up. <laughs> my extreme attention to detail, which is typically a deficit, makes me look at the my stream. My because uh, you know I play the stream here on my little. Beep boop beep boop. That's so cute. Oh yeah, just, I have uh, I have Karen's old Pixel now, so I could probably do that. Yeah, it turns out um, the positive side to Maggie constantly breaking her phones is that I take her old phones, and if they still work, I use them. Like, for Extra Life, I used one as a camera and another one as a camera, and I was when I was in the attic, I had, like, a camera and Discord, and and most of those were her old phones that are broken but still working. Oh, that's wild. Speaking of which, I gotta buy her. Uh, I've decided... Well, she already knows this, but... She started a new job. Her new job is basically nurse practitioner home visits. And she's paranoid about leaving some of her equipment behind. Like, her stethoscope is, like, $250. And she doesn't want to lose it somewhere. What? So I was like, she was like, well, maybe I should get some of those tile trackers. And I looked it up. And it turns out, by far, the best tracking system is AirTags. Um, because of, quite frankly, the uh, scary privacy concerns around them also make them fantastic trackers. So <laughs> we're basically almost any iPhone or iPad is constantly... Brock is constantly looking for air tags near them and sending the cloud that information. So if you lose something, if anybody with an iPhone or iPad walks past, they will probably find it. 
um, which is great for, for, for tracking objects. It's terrible for tracking people. But anyways, um, so I think I have to get her an iPhone 12 mini for Christmas. Oh, no. And, uh, uh, which means I get her me. old OnePlus. I get my, I get, I get her old, my old OnePlus 5, which means I get, I get a third camera phone. Yay. Woo! It's cameras all the way down, baby. It's great. Plus with that OBS cam app where you can basically use your smartphone as a USB or wireless camera. We got to do something stupid with that, like a 12 camera setup. It's got to do something. More Gundam. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, because now that I have my right there, I'll show yeah. the fine people at home. Right there's my desk setup. Wow. So I'll just run cameras there and run chat there and I'll and, be fine. And mine's right over there as well, but I can't show the folks at home. Because I don't want to. It's full of gross body parts. Um... Oh, that hurt. So, have you done anything last time? Did you do some? You did some grinding. I did some grinding. Some... I caught a duo, duo, du duo. Um, I caught some other Pokemon's. I put someone in the nursery. I can't remember who. And I level and I evolutioned, evolved uh, my Nidoran. Nidor Nidoran. Ah, tis I. I've evolved. I um. We were okay, talking about this I'm trying to remember stream. what's good against flying. And it's not, it's is it's not fighting, because we yes, thought it's not fighting, not fighting. Uh, I'm trying to remember the song. I listened to it a few times. Um, oh, really? Because I have a good clue for this. No, I'm trying. It's is it poison? I don't believe so. I'll I'll double check. I know it's at least one. Yeah, can you double um, check? Oh no! Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it a rock? Because rocks hurt birds. Two birds, one stone, right? I believe it is rocks, but there's also... Um... Two birds, one stone. There's also... Um... Think about airplanes. Yeah, they crash into rocks like John Denver. I remember that. Yes, but there's there's two other things that airplanes and are And the ground. Of. They crash into the ground. Well, there's four things that... Uh, that... Um... And there's lightning can strike a plane. That's right. There's three more. So lightning can strike a plane. Rocks can hit rocks a plane. Rocks of the ground. Rocks of the ground. Uh, oh, but ground type what? Pokemon aren't good either? No, because okay, they're flying. So, so I should it's say really rock, weird. not ground. Yes. Um, um, think about... Um, oh, no, wait. You said you said rocks. What, what else did you say? Electric rock. Yes, the two there's I said. one more. Think about... Think about in the winter. Oh, ice. What do they do to the place? Ice, ice. They de-ice them. They de-ice The other two. Um, one second. I have to look it up real quick. Um. The. <laughs> Oops, sorry, the other two are the two towers. <laughs> From Lord That's of the Rings? planes are weak, too. Oh, no. steel. <laughs> Right. <laughs> twin. Twin towers. I should have said twin. I get twin and two towers mixed up. Yeah, that Lord of the Rings Lord of the Rings wild. The twin towers. <laughs> oh, I feel like that joke would have landed much better if I'd gotten that right. It would have it's landed much better in, in 2004. <laughs> it's it's uh, ice, rock, electric, tower one, tower two. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, okay, so what's good against uh, plants? Fire. Yes. Fire burns plants. By plants, you, plants. Mean, plants you mean grass, right? Grass. Bulbasaur's grass yes. type, right? Or Ivysaur. Yeah. Because they got a plant on their back. I'm going to light you on fire. Shout out to chat. Love you, boys. Hi, chat. I don't know if anyone's I there. I found a... I found a really good poster. It was six dollars, and I didn't want to buy it, but um, it's at Hobby Lobby, and it was all of the original 150 or 151 Pokemon, like in a, in, a, in a chart, <laughs> which is pretty cool. I like that. Like it just looked nice. Yeah. So I think I want. 
that as a poster, so I'm currently looking up how... 22. So I'm just looking up how much it would cost to get it printed in centered meters. No, oh, fall asleep. What is that? 23 inches. Ugh. 35. Wake up, you dummy. Do, 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 do. Hey, thank God. $7 to custom print that onto canvas. And then I would just have to stretch it myself. That's not bad. That's I may not do bad that. at all. Okay, Gyarados, I want to... Oh, I don't have my Pikachu. Okay, what's good against water? You can electric water. You can freeze water. Is that the other one? Um, um, no. It, it, that one's weird. Ice is half effective, so it's not very effective against water. You have electric. Think about what... This one's weird. Think about what needs water to grow. What what gets better with water? Plants get better with water. Yeah, that's the weird one. Yeah. I don't have any plants. Is fighting good against... Well, I guess not. You have electric. Do you have... I don't have electric. electric. So the other thing I like to do is I like to put a water against a water. And if your water boy has any non-water attacks. Because that way you can do normal effectiveness while only taking... <clears throat> Yeah, that's Half true. I, I forget about that one. Hey, look! It's just two, two oh long boys. Oh, uh, we intimidated each other. Oh, <laughs> That's adorable. I'm going to tackle you. Whoa. This thing is um. not going to work out. Oh? Yeah, but you can at least whittle. Unless you confuse yourself. Please hurt yourself in your confusion. Please hurt yourself in your confusion. Oh, geez, folks. Yes! God, that's sick. I still need to buy your, um, Poke your Pokemon gift? Elite 4. Yeah, because honestly, the problem now is I I'm just looking at the calendar, and it's possible that you may beat the Elite 4 like first or second week of January. And the problem is with Christmas shipping, etc. Oh, dang it. Some of the yeah, things I want to get you may not make it in time. Man, there is somebody in my sister-in-law's Florida neighborhood that has a fake snow machine. And every year... They coat their yard in snow. That seems like a really good waste of water. I, I don't know. I'm looking at it. It looks like it's a. It does. It it's not. It's not a real. It's not real snow. But how do you clean it up afterwards? Then I think it's just like soap suds or something. You know what I mean? I'm gonna look uh, it up. Oh, I see. I'm looking it up. I found the Stop brand name. Stop thrashing me. I'm at a lame concert and this guy keeps thrashing oh my me. God. It's only $140? It's a pro snow machine. Ian, if you love snow so much, I don't get why you don't live in a colder place. If you just wanted snow, you should just go live in a colder place. I mean... You always talk about how you how, how much you love how warm it is there, and I just can't believe that you would want it cold enough to snow. <laughs> Look, there's a funny <laughs> joke here, but you haven't found it yet. Oh, now, it, uses, it uses snow concentrate, which I'm guessing is just... I think it's like a form of, like... Look at this guy. Bubbles. Hi, Kadabra. You know what Kadabra backwards is? Kill yourself. <laughs> Arbadec. What? What does that matter? There's no joke there. You fell for it. Oh. Oh my god. Now my sister's making liquor hot chocolate. She's licking it's Christmas Who's hot season. chocolate. So I'm out of sorts. We went down to uh, the outlet mall. Uh, there's a really good outlet mall at Daytona. 
Daytona. Which is right next to the the speedway. The speedway. I ate dinner right across the speedway. I could hear somebody. Somebody was taking a car around the track because I could hear it. I'm excited to go see a race there. Um, if I do go see a race there, I do want to pixelate it. Should be cool. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to make the Daytona 500 this upcoming year because I think I have a wedding the next day in Maryland. Um, that sucks. Yeah. So we literally, it's like an hour 15 down. So we did an hour 15 dinner shopping, hour 15 back, and I got home about five minutes before the street. What? Started. You stinker. You stinker. You pooped. You pooped. I took it easy on you, too. Garbage got $900. You stinker. Which Pokemon do you think is the stinkiest? But not because of like their physical attributes, but because they. What Pokemon has the worst hygiene? What Pokemon has the Snorlax? He can't properly wash himself. He sleeps a lot in the sun, too. Yeah, you know he's just getting ripe. I bet his oh, his stinky little piggies, I bet they get so stinky from, <laughs> from walking around all day. You I know? can see Machoke. I'm trying to decide if Machoke's must is stinky or not. I'm going to go revival Pokemon. Because I'm a little bitch. You coward. I like lost half. Half my peeps. I look. I'm just gonna say it. it there's saves no a lot problem of time. with wiping. Yeah, there's really no problem. So you you would get farther than you would think by the time you wipe. Yeah, but uh, you also told me that about going to the bathroom, and I haven't wiped in three weeks. And man, I gotta get a bidet. Oof, bidet, Mike. Going on the stream. Actually, Speaking you know of uh, going to the bathroom, I might have to go to the bathroom because. I wolfed down some food right before this, and it already wants revenge. Uh, fingers crossed somebody gets the bidet that's on my gift list for Christmas. It's supposed to be the best attachable bidet. It is on Amazon, and it's only $370. But it looks very good. Why can't I use a self-scope? It has a it rear someone? and front spray. The wand is adjustable, so you can adjust it to, to hit yeah. where it needs to. I don't like that. Um, it has several modes, like soft, heavy. You can adjust the pressure. It has a deodorizer. It also has temperature. I tried to swipe And uh, that's pretty much it. But honestly, uh -huh. it's Toto. Fantastic Japanese toilet brand. So I cannot wait to get this. Ugh, Ugh he's shoving a nail in his head. Yeah, so I'll send you the link, Will. Um, yeah, I'll buy that does for you. Say, Once I beat the Elite Four, I'll get that for you. I just checked. It'll get here on Thursday. It arrives before Christmas, so you can go ahead and order it. Yeah. That's smart. Here, cuck. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to audible here and run to the bathroom quick, so you just entertain the folks at home. Hello, everybody. Uh, let's talk about Pokemon. Um, Will's gone, so let's talk about his progress so far. I think he's doing a great job. I actually think the um, the stream setup we're using, where basically he can grind between streams, but he's not allowed to advance the story or advance beyond a certain checkpoint, is working out really well because I'm playing this game simultaneously as him, but I'm I'm about to hit the Elite Four right now, so I'm I'm further ahead than him. I found there were plenty of points where I was mainlining the story and then having to go back and grind a bit. And so I don't think we're going to have that problem with him. I feel like when we get to the main story points, he's going to be A-OK, -okay, and he's going to be able to breeze through some of these story points. The only one that could be a little troublesome is the Elite Four, but I'm really, really hoping I can line up that Elite Four fight. Um... I, I think it's going to be close, but I, I'm trying to line it up with the end of December around the holidays so that when he's bored and he's sitting around, he doesn't have anything to do. He can just grind, 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 grind some Pokemon. Um, but other than that, I think he's doing good. I feel like I feel like he's at a good level. He's actually swapping his team around a lot more than I was expecting just because I didn't swap my team around that much. Not because I had like a perfect team or anything, but just because I wasn't engaging with that because I didn't feel like I have to. But he's he's rather enjoying it. Um so I think he's making good progress on some Pokemon. Um, 
I, I am a little worried, though. It feels like he's not quite getting types yet. And these gym fights and trainer encounters, they get more difficult. Especially later on. Even before you get to the Elite Four, they start to use multiple types, etc. And you've really got to start thinking about, okay, what is my party comp? Who can I switch to to be uh, effective against them, but also not weak to them? And I'm not sure he's quite getting it yet. He's working on it. He's working on it. But I think he's going to get it soon. Um, if you guys are watching along, throw in the chat your predictions. What do you think is going to happen? I, I'm curious to hear how many times you think it will take him to beat the Elite Four. I'm going to tell him, get your Pokemon to level 55 to 60. And then take on the Elite Four. And um, I'll, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that is right around the either the range of the elite four pokemon or the recommended range so let's go see the elite four i'm gonna take a look at them. yeah the elite four are all level 50 to 60 i'm seeing 51 up to 60 three oh no wait sorry this is saying yeah it goes up to 63 for the final so, um, yeah, I'm going to tell him to get to 55 to 60. I wonder how long it will take him to beat. I'm going to say, I'm going to go two times. I think the first time he's going to come up against him, he's going to get whopped. And he's going to feel so bad about it that he's going to have to go grind a lot. And then he's going to over grind. And the second time it's going to be easier for him. But it's going to be interesting to see what he does um he's at pokemon tower now so he has a lot left but i do think he's got four badges already he's got four badges to go bunch of nice routes cycling road plenty of good stuff he hasn't even learned to surf yet that opens up a lot i i, I think we're gonna be we're looking pretty good <sighs> how's that i can now freely admit because i didn't I almost pooped my pants on that last battle. <laughs> like, it, it came to a point where, you know, like, you're just trying to keep it inside. And I thought yeah. I was about to lose. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my God. That's Redonkey Bonk. Hi. Do you... Uh, let, me, let me ask bonk you a question. Here. This is not... This is not a promise. Do you have room for a poster if I did get you a poster I'm talking a 23 inch by 34 inch poster do I have room in my apartment yes yeah totally because I don't want to okay all right that's like the one thing I haven't done because I haven't framed anything okay I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going to get you one and then you have nowhere to put it like I have um I have a nice piece of art but I need to I need to build a wood frame to stretch the canvas over I think you can just go buy those for pretty cheap, the frames. Yeah, that's probably true. Because I'm looking at AliExpress, and the canvas printing is pretty cheap. So I, I would just have to buy a frame to stretch it over. Let me look it up. Hobby Lobby Frames. What, what's it called? Like a, is it, what's, it's, is it a frame? It's not a frame. Is it? It's a, uh, forget what they're called. They're like, not I'll like look it up. backboard, is it? Oh! Oh! oh. Mm, what am I doing? Never have Man, I ever um, pooped in my pants. Yeah. Because we don't have a local chat this week, it means we get to talk about video games we've well, been playing. We've been playing. Um. Did I? I'm gonna take a guess here, based on some earlier messages you sent it sounds like you beat halo infinite no so you wiped your save yeah about an hour away from the end <laughs> you idiot uh, i was properly warned but i was trying to get the content for my job uh um, wait wait why couldn't you like create a fake xbox like a guest account log into so that and then the problem it? is 
the way that uh, split screen hack works is if there's any menus that pop up, it soft locks the game. Uh, mm -hmm. And the beginning of Halo, the very first thing when you spawn in, it pops up the scanning menu. So it's soft lock. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let me load my actual save. Um, and uh, yeah, that's when it happened. But on the bright side is I very much like Halo and I'm almost back to where I was. Um, and the other nice thing oh. is um, I <laughs> learned about the scorpion gun, uh, which is on the third mission of the game. So I went and grabbed that, and I have been absolutely flying through that game because I have a gun that just shoots scorpion tank shells and is... What? <laughs> unlimited ammo. <laughs> and your character doesn't animate while you hold it. You can't melee. when you. There's nothing on the screen when you grappling hook. The grapple just comes out of thin air. Uh, and if you ever drop it, you lose it. But I have not dropped it. Gotcha. And it kills pretty much everything in one hit. And it's wild and <laughs> fantastic. And it kills bosses in like two hits. And I've decided I like it's the definitive way to play Halo Infinite. <laughs> if, is, okay, it says Fort Tremonius. Okay, so you, you, you get to the open world and then you do the big tower. No, so and when then, you... It's Fort yeah, Tremonius, not the this? tower. So it's when you first come into the open world... When that big door yeah. opens and you come yeah. out, there's an artillery gun up there and you just go up to it and at the very tip of the gun, you hit hold X and it gives you the weapon. It's the oh. only time in the game you can get it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Yeah, I thought it was pretty wild. Yeah, I've been playing a little bit. I think I've played a couple more hours. I, I, I don't know. It's kind of like Forza Horizon where I don't think the game is incredible but it's just enough popcorn for me that I'll be like, yeah, let me sit down and play for 20 minutes and just like, I'll come over here and do this, come over here and do that. I, I'm getting better at the at the grappling hook. I still don't think the grappling hook implementation is that good, but I'm getting better at it. And like the tricks you said where like you jump and changing angle and all that does make it a lot, the traversal a lot easier. Um, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to do some of the campaign missions, but it's just some more of the campaign missions, but it's just the open world feels pretty samey so basically the only thing taking keeping me going is like i like the, the halo combat the ai is fantastic in this one but i just don't think it's that great of an open world implementation it's not a bad implementation but it's not a great implementation you know yeah i i, I think the thing I, I agree with you there the thing i like is like i am i, I think being able to walk between halo missions is a better experience than choosing them from a menu. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Like, I like 100%. that feeling. Um, so it, it kind of doesn't yeah. bother me that the world's not that fleshed out, even though it is pretty well fleshed out. It's not, it's not like Breath of the Wild. Um, but yeah, it's fun. I got a gas. So I think that, I think it's called a stretcher bar frame yeah it's a stretcher bar this is what it's called um yeah wait so okay look this is a little bit of inside baseball but so we are recording our game of the year stuff on monday night this monday night yes so is that going up this Thursday? Um, yeah, we can swap those. I was going to ask you if you still wanted to record year in review tomorrow. Do we have a third? I think we really should have a third. Uh, I don't have a planned third. So we can we can push that to when I get back. Because I do have that Wednesday. That's... If you have that Wednesday. Yeah. Well, we could also do that live. Oh, right? yeah. Sorry. We can also do it live without. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That solves the whole issue. Well, wait, let me, because I, I would really prefer the original order, which is year in review before game of the year. Because the other thing is there are things that I want to at least sample before we go to game of the year. But it sounds like according to when people can go. Let me double check. Oh, just 
did that twice in a row. Oh, because you just marked yourself completely unavailable. Okay, yeah, I guess we do Game of the Year Monday. When did you say that was Monday at 8? Yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm just uh, adding it to my calendar. I mean, we uh, could also do Year in Review with all four of us on Monday and just do Game of the Year. Me and you and Jake. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean we're all I showing up do, Monday I, night, so it doesn't matter what we do. Yeah, I, I just, between the two, I would much rather have Game of the Year be all four. Yeah, I think so. Because it's too. like Subpixel's Game of the Year. And just, just for those at home, this is not our Game of the Year pick. We think we're just going to do a very casual format of each of us talks about our games of the year. Um, and that's it. I don't think we're going to try and do anything like this is the Subpixel Game of the Year. Because that's inscription. And if anybody says otherwise, they could die. Yeah, it's inscription. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the other game I played, I started playing it this morning, is in preparation for Game of the Year, is Loop Hero. Ooh, I like Loop Hero. I don't think I like it. Really? That's surprising. Yeah, I, so uh, for those of you at home, Loop Hero is a, it's an idle game. But it's got a very strong retro aesthetic. It's got like literally a, a CRT filter on top of it. Um, it's kind of like Castlevania-esque in terms of how it's doing music and text and, and styling. Um, basically, your hero, it's an auto battler. So you hear your hero is traveling in a loop and auto battling. But as he gets the loot, you are managing the loot on him. You're also managing building placement so you can place buildings that spawn specific types of enemies, but you can also place buildings that give you benefits like better health or better attack speed. And then um, it's a loop. So you go through the loop until you die or you you progress and beat a boss, etc. And then you get resources out of that and then you can leave the loop and use the resources to build buildings at your base camp, which give you other benefits. And um, I don't know, I just feel like progression in this game is so slow. Like I played it for two hours this morning and I think I unlocked two buildings. And that's it. Like, I I know it's supposed to be like a semi idler and an auto battler, but it just feels like like I had a loop that I was in for 35 minutes and I felt like I was doing really well and I left the loop and I didn't have enough resources to build anything. Even though I had collected a lot. So I I don't I I don't know. Did you feel like that? Did you feel like the game was a bit too slow? No, I, I also like was just playing it like all the time yeah how far did you how far did you get uh i think i got to the i think i was on the third boss okay uh i can't i i at least got to the point where i unlocked i had two two or three other characters i could go in as oh gotcha yeah see i'm i'm about to the i I got to the first boss today, but I actually died right before I got to him. Um, I, I just wish... I, I am kind of liking it. I just wish that the progress was like 10-15% faster. Because it feels like if I go in and I have a 45-minute loop and I come out of it, I feel like I should be able to put those resources towards something. Whereas right now it feels like I have to do that same loop two or three times just to be able to unlock or upgrade one thing. And that, yeah. that's too much. That's too really much of a grind. Especially, especially in the beginning of an idle game. Like like the beginning of an idle game has to has to satisfy you. It has to make the numbers go up so you get hooked. And then later on, you slow it down, typically. So that by that time you're already hooked and you're like, okay, I'm gonna let it idle for 10 minutes and then I'll get this thing. You're already hooked so it's okay to idle for 10 minutes. But if it's the beginning of the game, man, it's yeah, too slow. I, I, I don't, I never really let that game idle. Like I was always just playing, constantly playing. But I, but know? see, I think that's the other problem I'm having is that, like that 30, 40 minute loop I talk about. Like I, I say idle, but like you, I'm, I'm clicking the game constantly. So the problem is, it feels like I'm babysitting the game for 30 minutes. It's not like Cookie Clicker or anything else where I could just let it off to the side. 
and it'll progress and I'll come back and I'll be like, I didn't make as many cookies if I had sat here clicking upgrades, but I still made a lot of cookies and now I get to spend them. This yeah. is like, no, if you don't, if you don't babysit, they're going to get too powerful and you're going to die and you're only going to get 30% of your resources. Yeah. And it's as like, as opposed to the 60, if you bail, I feel like I was always focused on trying to make like the structures on the outside so I could like yeah. spawn new things or get treasure or like, and I do like that. Yeah, I, I do really like that. I just think that it's too slow. Like if if every loop had me coming out with enough resources to do one upgrade, uh, I would I would love the game. But the fact that I have to go through that loop two or three times to get enough resources to come out to upgrade something, especially this early in the game, is like, well, what happens when it gets to the grind? When it's 10 loops, each loop is an hour just to get the next unlock or something, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah, I should try it again because it's been long enough. I, like, I don't remember things mm -hmm. taking that long, but they they certainly could have. I'm probably exaggerating. It's probably only 20, 25 minute loops, but it still felt like I would do pretty well in a loop and I would come out of it. I, I would almost get to the main boss, the first boss and then die. It's only like my fourth loop of the game. And I would come out of it and be like, I got a lot of resources. What can I upgrade? And it's just like absolutely nothing. And it's like. Okay, well, I guess all I can do now is just go back in and do another loop. You're like swapping you know? out cards too, right? Uh, you mean putting cards down or or just letting them die? No, you so mean, like you in your deck, you can like but change out your deck and everything. Yeah, but in the beginning, you only have like it's. I think I only have like two or three extra cards that I can swap in, from the starting cards. So it's like. I just I don't think things are moving fast enough at the beginning. Yeah, I, I think it'll to start because like once you get cities and then you get like quests and then that. you get like the vampire lords yeah, and those. like all that stuff. So yeah, that stuff starts to culminate a lot more. I do love the aesthetic. I think it's a crazy idea. I just I just think it needs to be refined a bit more. And, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed because people were crazy about it. And coming back to it. It probably doesn't make my game of the year list, honestly. Well. Oh, but you know what I do need to do is it's I. I need to compile a list of all the games I played this year from local chat. Oh, <gasps> yes. Is that a. Are you going to catch Cubo. that boy? Let's hope this peck doesn't kill you. It doesn't. Yeah, our first episode was on January 7th. Yeah, baby. And now I got like a billion great balls, so I can just use those. Man, I played a lot of games this year. But most of them did not come out this year. Look at this guy. He's lonely. Give Cubone. Uh, should I give him a nickname? What should I nickname him? Um, Pants Tent. Mama's Little Boner. Red Rocket. Chubby Wubby. I'm going to call him Jer. Did I spell Jeremy or is there an EY? Why don't you do Jeremiah? Well, but Jeremiah was a bullfrog. That's a good, that's, that's a good joke. You should call him Jeremiah then. If I, if I get a bullfrog Pokemon. Actually, actually, you know what? No, I think, I think you're right. It's, you name him Jeremy and they say, why'd you call him Jeremy? And you go, cause Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Yeah. Well, that's he was the funny. bullfrog. Not for sure. I did play Hitman 3 this year. Boom! Let's see what else came out this year. Oh, it did come out. You know what I need to revisit? Because I just realized it came out this year. The Dyson Sphere program. Oh, yeah. The game I couldn't play because you were playing it. That's correct.
Okay. When did Listen Wilmot's gas leak? warehouse come out? Got... That came out a couple years. Yeah, I think. Oh, you're right. can't escape! I hate when you can't escape. It's interesting. It throws a little wrinkle in it. Sometimes you can escape. Oh, is it just if I switch Pokemon? Ugh. Played some Rogue Leader. Oh, that's right. That's got to go on the list. Uh, just a heads up, while we're talking behind the scenes stuff, the uh, list I sent you of events in 2021, I don't think it includes early access stuff. So, like, Valheim is not on there. Gotcha. We'll just have to we'll have to remember to add that. So what did we settle on? We're gonna save here in the review to do to record when I'm back. Yes, because okay. I think we want all four for game of the year if possible. I think that's better. Yeah. I, I was just bitch. Yeah, if you just wanted to get it out of the way, we could do it tomorrow and then do the other one Monday, and then we'd be good. If you could find a third, I could I could record it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh right, that was the issue. Um. Man, I forgot that I played. Um. I forgot that I played Escape from Tarkov this year. <laughs> oh man, that game was so good. Man, it's so just it's good? like I I came across a TikTok today of somebody playing it, and it does look good. It probably is great when you're 30 hours in, you finally understand it. But it, it is not welcoming at all. Oh, that's a good one. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. Oh. Do you have a dedicated um, anti... Most of these guys are poison, right? You have an anti-poison, dude? I thought they were all ghost. Maybe you're right. It's been, a, it's been a couple weeks since I was in this place. I played Outer Wilds this year. I forgot about that. Was Teardown this year? I don't think Teardown was this year. No, I think it was last year. It's not. It's not making the list anyways. Bing do. You said you have a database spreadsheet of all this stuff, right? Of like, you keep a list of all the games you play in a year? Yeah. I used to do it with the giant bomb list, and now I do it uh, just in a spreadsheet. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that, but uh, I'm going to use Notion. If I ever get my, my applet command is almost working. I just have to get the deployment right. Oh, I forgot. In June, I played a game called the U.S. Housing Market. <laughs> that's what I won. That's what I won. I the Dragon US Rage. Market. Is that when I won the U.S. housing market? I can't remember. Cruelty Squad is from this year too. Oh, my Pokemon are fully healed. Yeah. Thanks, babe. Oh, I forgot. I played Full Spectrum Warrior. Man, I played some Stalker 1 today, Call of, or Heart of Chernobyl. So I was playing it for a little bit, and I was like kind of remembering it from when I played it before. Isn't it, like, isn't it Shadow of Chernobyl? Yeah, Heart is the new one. Shadow of Chernobyl is the first one. Thank you. And I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And I was like, oh, let me check out some of the mods. So I downloaded one of the ENB mods, like, but it's not just ENB. It, it does uh, like gameplay and all sorts of stuff. Man, loaded mm -hmm. that thing up. That game looks like it came out, like, yesterday. It is wild. Um, it looked so The game good. looked great, even when it came out. Like, yeah. it just had, like, a really gr good aesthetic to it. 
So like it was like windy and rainy. So unfortunately it wasn't loading my like 45 minute save into the new mod system. So I might just start it over, but or I might move on to the second one and play with that mod there. But it was really good. Let's see if Dragon I, Type. I have such a, I have such a weird relationship with those games because I, I really appreciate them and I really want to love them, but I have tried playing them so many times and they just are like too obtuse for me to get past the first 45 minutes. So I, if the new one gets good reviews, I, I will 100% dive into it. I mean, it'll be on Game Pass anyways. Yeah, but I just mean if it's not good, then I'm not going to take the effort to oh, actually try it. There's something about I like think... impenetrable, not, not that it's impenetrable, but like that sort of like it takes effort, like always uh, like tickles me for games They're like Dwarf Fortress and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm almost through the year. I think so far I have played only eight, make that nine games released in 2021 in 2021. Yeah, mine was pretty low. But I also, I was saving money for a house. So for a while there, I was deliberately not buying new games. Man, every every now and then I open this document and Dang I it. see like, I see Life is Strange True Colors. And I'm like, I don't remember playing that. And then I look at the name and it's a week that I wasn't on there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, so, it's somebody else's list. Oh, so uh, I sent you a picture of this, but I now officially have, I think it's all of the DS and 3DS Pokemon games on my 3DS. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just, I, I wanted them there, so I knew they were available. Um, and I just, uh, I keep opening them and get, getting to the main menu of it and being like, I can't. I gotta beat because I, I want to beat Fire Red before I started another one. But but you also don't burn out because after this season, at some point in the future, we're gonna do another season. So don't get don't get burned no, out. No 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 no. I mean I, I'll get I'm probably not burned out, but I will. I'm not gonna play them all the way until the next in a year when we're playing again. Yeah, and I'm also speaking from a personal place where I I would get burned out if I played very yeah. similar games back to back but also my my thought is if i get burned out in january on pokemon by the time december rolls around again i think i'm gonna be okay yeah um but what i did start playing was pokemon picross um because picross is great is it on, is it on the ds which it's one on the that? 3ds and so is I, man. and i, I installed so I three other picross games and 3d picross round two so, uh, my flights I, um, are about to get great. When I have, uh, like, panic attacks, anxiety attacks, and or my stomach's not feeling well, and I need to concentrate on something else, like Pit Cross, and also, um, what's the other one? Sudoku? Sudoku. Those, those, let me just, like, those, that's my chill stuff. Karen made a pretty good point today that kind of threw me off, which is Picross is kind of like Minesweeper. Like, they function almost the same way. And I get why she was saying it. Like, if, I think if she a played a lot of Picross, she would know the differences. But it, like, took me back. And I was like, what? I was like, oh, yeah, I guess they are pretty similar. Like, the numbers tell you where the bombs are. And you're trying to avoid them. Yeah. Yeah. But there's no... I actually don't know this because I don't play Minesweeper a lot, but is there a definitive yes, no answer in, in Minesweeper? Or, like, can you yes. logic every mine in Minesweeper? Oh, no. There are some that... It's it's kind of like a bad Picross puzzle. There are some where you have to guess. They do not give you enough yeah. information. And I feel like know. good Picross is always... Fig is always... You can always be certain. <laughs> good Picross. I, I, I don't know. I feel like... I feel like good accessible pit cross i feel like at some point i fully understand if the most difficult pit cross make you guess things and then have yeah, to work yeah, off that true. assumption for a bit i don't want to play that type of pit cross but 
Yeah, so I was almost thinking, like, on this, when I'm headed up to Utah, I was like, why am I even bringing my Switch? <laughs> I'm, like, playing so much on 3DS and my Game Boy. So I'm bringing with me a Game Boy SP, a 3DS XL, and a Nintendo Switch. <laughs> it's like three generations. Why? But because Karen, Karen's been playing a bunch of Pokemon Pinball on my SP. And then I've oh. been playing 3DS stuff. I want to play Picross. And then the Switch we're bringing out. Bring the Switch. Well, we're bringing out the Switch for when we get there to play like Mario Party and stuff with my brother. So I, I don't know why I find it so funny how much you overpack. Like you would come to my house for two days and you would bring like 20 bags. Like what? when we went to PAX, we went to PAX Unplugged, you brought like seven or eight RPG books <laughs> and we were only there for two and no, a half No, I days. brought like, no, I do not overpack. I'm a, such a light packer. You are not. How many yeah, but, how many RPG books did you bring to Pax Unplugged? They're but they're like five minute RPG books. It's still that's too much packing. But also I have a car. That is a completely different ball game. When I fly, I pack two bags and they're both carry on. Oh, that's right, because you guys don't fly southwest out of there. Um Okay, I have my new list. I have 18, as far as I can tell, there are 18 brand new games that I played this year. Well, that might be more than me. I was I was definitely sampling for a bit. A lot of these are indies, but I, I think there's at least two, two of them solid games of the year. The third one, no, I know what the third one is. I, I think, oh man, uh, so, I think I think if it's okay, I think we do your three that you talk about in depth, but then also some honorable mentions. Like, I'm not gonna have Ratchet and Clank on my list. That is nothing against Ratchet and Clank. I just don't have the game yet. So you know, like that would be an honorable mention. What I keep trying to do tackle, I, I've done it like three times, and I know it doesn't work. Boom, 26. Yeah, I think I have my three. I was hoping to play a couple more before we recorded. Like I was thinking about getting Ratchet and Clank, but it's too late now. Stop putting nails in your head. Oh, come on. You doing okay over there, baby boy? Yeah, I just, uh, kept getting cursed. Yeah, um, if you can find somebody to record tomorrow. But I think it would have to be later in the day, if possible. That's okay with you. Yeah, that's fine with me. I I do like the idea of... Let's just talk this out. It's not happening this year. But if we were to have a subpixel game of the year system, what would it be? Um, A lot of arguing. Because I, I think what I what I one of the things I like about Game of the Year, I'm sorry, one of the things I like about Subpixel is that we were talking about this with 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 um, other uh, companies and and Gerf, Gersman talked about this with the the Game Awards, um, which is that the popular games get played by the most people and therefore are most likely to be talked about. Whether that game actually deserves it or not, aka Deathloop, it's popular enough that a lot of people will play it and therefore have something to say, and you'll have more people that like the game 
even if the percentage of like is smaller versus an indie game that not a lot of people played. Um, and one of the things I really like about us at Subpixel is like we we don't really care about that. Like you and I, we we play the new releases that we care about. We don't feel obligated to play. Okay, but I think you may have a. Per I I think I'm a little concerned on your behalf because you did purchase Far Cry Six this year, which I think is a step in the wrong direction. Um, yeah, but that was only because I liked Far Cry Five and I wanted to see if Six was good. But I, what I mean is that like those I games feel like are if sorry, were, those games are enjoyable. They haven't borderline. been good since Far Cry 2, but they're enjoyable. 5 was borderline. Yeah. I, I think, um, I, I just mean it's not like we're like, oh, new game came out, we have to pick it up. It's the big popular game, we have to pick it up. Like, I like not none of us at Subpixel picked up Returnal. Because it was like, it looked interesting, the reviews weren't great, so it was like, okay, yeah. we don't have to pick it up. We don't have to pick it up to cover it to be in the zeitgeist. I just didn't want to pay uh -oh. $70. Yeah, and it's not necessarily anything against the game, it's just... Because of that, that pushes us towards games that we enjoy, whether that's an old game or a new game. And so that's why I think Game of the Year at Subpixel would be difficult because we're not going to sit down at the table with the same list of games we played that year. Like, you and I are going to overlap a decent amount, but we're going to be missing big games. Yeah, and that's like, the other thing is, like, if one of us played Returnal... And, and the other thing, I'm the only one who played Far Cry 6. If I thought Far Cry 6 was amazing, no, no one could argue with me. Ratchet and Clank, better example. You're the only one that played it. And you probably yeah. think it's amazing. We don't know. Yeah, it's a good game. I, I, it's not in my top I, three, but it's good. I wouldn't feel great arguing against you with Ratchet and Clank, but I feel stronger about my picks. So it'd be kind of a bad argument yeah. situation where I go, I don't know what's wrong with your game, but it can't possibly be better than my game. You know? So I think, I almost think the structure is like, we would just have to come up with a whole bunch of weird categories and there's no single game of the year. Yeah, it was more of like seeing what each of us thought our games of the year was and then kind of discussing that. No, 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 no. Oh, I understand. Sorry, I'm sorry. saying if we yeah, were if to we did do have a structure. Year. Yes, sorry. I realize that now. Yeah. I think it would be like we would come up with like 10 categories. Yeah. And then maybe maybe it's four games of the year. Actually, I kind of like that. It's like, what is Ian's game of the year? I mean, we're kind of we're not doing that this year because we're coming up with three. We're not saying this is my game of the year. Explicitly, but if each of us had our own game of the year, so so we would give out four game of the year awards instead of just one. And then outside of that, but the problem is like I, I want to have arguments. And it's hard to have arguments if everybody hasn't played the game, which leads me back to what what you were talking about, which is we come up with a short list of games and everybody has to play those games. Yeah, that's true. I The other thing is I don't like arguing about games that I like. So like, I think that's where it would also fall apart. See, I I like doing that just because, I mean, part of me likes, likes debating, but the other part of me is like, I feel like that's when you get into the nitty gritty details. Like you can say, I, I enjoyed this. I had fun. I like this game, but it's like, that's bad criticism get into the details of it what is it about it that made it better and that's not me saying you're wrong it's me saying like like engage with the game on a, on a much deeper level and be like they did this interesting thing which led to this interesting mechanic which led to this and then you appreciate the game even more yeah that's true i think I, I just don't like doing that so that's mostly why i don't tend to <laughs> argue stuff i don't know it's just not fun for me Yeah, I'm not crazy like about a game of the year person. system either. I just think seeing other publications and what they say the game of the year is, and it's like, you are just wrong. You know? Yeah, but that's also your opinion. No, it's fact. Although some of these, some of these are... Forza Horizon 5 yeah. It's not the game of the year. But I can, no, I can see the not. argument for Deathloop. I didn't vote for Deathloop, but I can see the argument. I, I mean, I, I can see the argument. I don't think it's a good argument, but I can see it. Yeah, I mean, just because, I mean, it was like, 
if a large group of people that a game hits with like a game, then it's going to be their game of the year, you know? Yeah, I just think... Like, um, it happened to not hit with you, and if it did that same thing with all those people, then it wouldn't... Like, if everyone felt the same way you did, then I would agree I with know. you. That's a very subjective... That's a very subjective way of looking at games. Whereas I think you can... I think there are objective ways to judge games. Where you can look at something and say, this is objectively bad design. Yeah, that's true. But you also didn't finish Deathloop, did you? No, no, and, and I'm not talking about Deathloop in specific, but but the words you used was like, if if it hits with people, if they feel that way. And that's that's looking at games as in subjective, as in whether a game is good or not, is if it if it resonates with you or not. And I'm saying like the I prefer judging games objectively. Like look at the game design, the implementation, the quality of the story, etc was that well done or not yeah i yeah i think that's where we differ because I, I i prefer feel rather than like straight yeah logic and i i think that goes back to for me like feel plays a big part but i think feel is always underlying by logic in terms of if the game design is logically sound then it will feel good you know, if it feels good, then that means it's sound. If it feels bad, that means there's probably an issue with the, with the game design somewhere. And I know that's very, like, simplistic to say, but I think you can tie the two together. You just be like, I don't know, it feels good. And it's like, but how? There are all these issues with it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, but I, I think... I was thinking about today. Deathloop is just... No. Like, the problems I have with Deathloop tie back to that same old argument I have, which is that I think triple A games are are kind of bad for gaming because it feels like the trend the last couple of years has been what is the hot new thing in indies? Like what is the hot new mechanic? Is it a battle royale? Is it roguelites, etc.? And then they just throw a budget at it and they overproduce it. Like um I was thinking about poker poker in red dead redemption 2 i didn't like playing poker in red dead redemption 2 because it was so slow and drawn out and there was an animation for everything and like if that was an indie game there would not be an animation for everything because they couldn't afford it but it plays in their favor because then you sit down and you go okay i'm gonna play some poker play some hands i'm gonna rip through some hands get some money Ooh, it's good, it's good. Whereas in Red Dead Redemption 2, like, 90% of the poker game is animations. Is, okay, let's deal cards. Okay, let's deal another card. Pass. Ante up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, be because it's a AAA game, like, if they didn't have animations in it, they were probably like, no, 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 that's not gonna do. It's a poker table, we have to have animations for everybody. We're gonna have, like, 10 different types of poker players, which determines, like, which animation set they use for how they throw chips, etc., but I, and I'm like, I, yeah, that 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 level of effort, that triple A level of effort is counterintuitive to it. But I think you know? that it depends on what you're there to do. If you're coming to Red Dead Redemption 2 just to play poker, I think you're you're playing the wrong game. Like when I play Red yeah. Dead, when I come to Red Dead Redemption 2 to play poker, because I want to feel like I'm playing poker in the Wild West mm. with a bunch of people at a table. That's fair. But I but I think what I'm trying to get at is that. A lot of times, AAA games feel like to be a AAA title, we have to add a lot of detail and excess on top of it. And then the other the other thing is we also have to appeal to a mass audience. So a lot of these things have to be super telegraphed, like in Deathloop, how the whole discover clues thing is not really discovering because anytime you look at something or do something, they just throw it in a menu as something that you learned. Like they, they, they over produce the game so much by adding so much fluff on top that it so much fluff and so much onboarding and hand holding that it ends up ruining the mechanic that they are trying to mm -hmm. introduce into the game yeah I, I i can see that about some stuff but i i feel also feel like if rockstar wanted to make a poker game it'd be a great game you know i don't know i think the best poker game i've ever played was for it was, I think it was for the Game Boy. And I played it at my grandma's house. It was like the only game we had. I was there for a week, but it was so good because it was so fast. So you could rip through a hand in like 10 seconds. 
But I bet it had so a really got, bad boop, open boop, world section. Boop, boop, boop. That was the crazy part. It was a whole casino. It had a working escalator. It was something Caesar's Palace. It was Super insane. Caesar's Palace. First episode of Scan Lines. No, like, like I, I, I totally see what you're saying, but it's almost like the need to add all this set dressing and triple A the game. Ends yeah, up no, no, I, I get what you're saying. I mechanics. just think the poker thing's a bad example. I think you could find a better example. I, I agree. I, I think, I think. Let's. You can probably help me with this. Okay, Death Loop. What is the indie game that Deathloop is doing? And in terms of that, I mean the Deathloop thing of like, there are multiple different areas and there's different clues and they're kind of intertwined with each other. So if you do this here, it does that there. I think I think a little bit of us Hitman. I feel like there's some other game I'm forgetting that does that. Where it's like an inter intertwined area with characters and you touch here, it touches there. Um... Because they're not the first ones to do it, but I can't remember the other earlier examples. Yeah, it's definitely an probably another time loop game, for sure. Jake made Monday plans. Oh. Okay. So let's do let's do year in review, you, me, and Kyle on Monday. Okay. We'll do something the end of the the end of the year. Unless you just want to do a normal local chat Monday. And then maybe the first week of January we do Game of the Year. Yeah, I think that could work. Okay. Stay out of our business. Um, I'm going to look it up. Because that, that was kind of my main problem with Deathloop was like... That whole thing of... That whole thing of there's these interconnected areas and doing one thing impacts another area is such a cool mechanic, but they held your hand and they kind of simplified it so much that it became like any quote unquote discovery you made didn't feel good. It didn't feel great. It didn't feel like, oh, this does that. It feels like, oh, they just told me this. You know, like there was there was no sense of accomplishment in it. Outer Wilds. That's that's I that's a big one. That's a big inspiration for them. Cause you have different locations and doing one thing in one gives you information on the other one. And there's a time loop. Also, man, I just didn't like the combat in Death Loop. Yeah, I think that's just arcane combat, which is weird because I I, I don't love mm. the combat in uh, Dishonored, but I like it in Prey, and I, I don't mind it as much in Life uh, in Life Loop, Death Loop. Um, yeah, I can't put my finger on what it is though, but there's something about it that just doesn't doesn't feel great. You know, I do think uh, what I do like about the guns in Death Loop is they did the uh, like mix of the Mirror's Edge thing where you're like guns aren't as powerful like you feel like yeah. all the guns aren't your always your solution and i like that yeah. yeah there's definitely a lot of interesting ideas i just don't think they pulled it off super well so to see it get a bunch of game of the year worth etc was was surprising can't wait to take down this old man You're making good progress, baby boy. Oh, I'm going Daddy's to this guy's house. Pokemon fan magazine. <gasps> I got a pokey flute. What's up, Shadow Dragon thirty ten? How's that rock rolling tonight? I am rock and rolling. 
around the Christmas tree. I got a Christmas tree today. I was very excited. Um. Oh, fake? No, real. I'm a real I boy. Just, we did the real once, and it was just way too much of a pain. Oh, I love it. Because uh, the entire apartment smells like delicious Christmas tree now. Um, that's great. That's and good. the nice thing about having a small apartment is I only need a small tree. So every place we... Uh, we only went to one place, but they have all a bunch of small trees left that still look good. Because nobody bought them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, it's time to go to Saffron the City. Hospital. We went to a Christmas party last night at somebody's house. They had a very big house, and we counted nine Christmas trees. One of them was like 14 feet tall. That's too many Christmas trees. Yeah, they just had them all over the place. Yeah, I love Christmas trees. Okay. I don't remember which one is Saffron City. You know, I could just fly there, but it's right here. Oh, you did get fly? Fly's great, isn't it? I love it. Okay. I'm I'm going to tell you what to do in Saffron City cuz it I accidentally skipped it. Have you already um Wait, let me talk to some people first. Have you already checked out Saffron City? Uh, no, I ran through it fast. Okay, yeah. Let's check out everything in here. There's some good stuff in here. Ooh, hyper po do, do, I don't think do, I need do, that, do, but I will take a couple do, max repels. Do, 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 do. And some do, more grabals. Thank you. I could probably sell you stuff, but I don't feel like it. Oops, I gotta, sorry, I gotta re-register my bike. The other thing about uh, live trees was how many, how much, how much needles and sap they shed and then how often you have to water them. And then also like, if you're gonna put lights on it, it sucks having to light it. Why does it suck having to light it? Cause you gotta like, do the whole like spin the tree and put the lights on there with a fake tree. Most of them nowadays have built in lights. So yeah, you don't, see, you don't take the lights off and on. Yeah, I, I like the ritual of like decorating the tree, you know? Yeah. Putting the train I mean, under we still, it. We still get that because we have to do. You gotta take it out and you gotta fluff it. It's a different ritual. Yeah. It just seemed too messy to do the real tree. Okay, there's two gyms. Me -do -do -do. Hey, you want to let me in there? My life as a criminal makes me feel so alive. Question from the chat, Will. Are you new to Pokemon? Um, I'm new to liking Pokemon, is my answer. What's your full history? Because we've gone over this somewhat before but i need to uh i, I played a, i played a bunch of ruby and other i think fire red as a kid Ooh, thank you for the tm uh and such and then i played like 30 hours 40 hours of blue uh in like college age and then i played like seven hours of blue last year and then that's it. But you never liked Pokemon. You actually hated Pokemon before. Yeah, this. I don't mind the games. I just don't like Pokemon that much. They're kind of annoying. Can you? But I think we, honestly, it was more through... like people's. I think it was people's uh, love of Pokemon that I hated more than actual Pokemon. Don't no. You you hated Pokemon. You hated Pokemon. You said it a lot. Um, but we need to talk about you previously said that you never understood catching pokemon yeah and we never went over that it just never occurred to me really you know it's kind of fun no it didn't i need you to explain 
like catching Pokemon. I just fought them mostly, you know? Didn't really catch But there's them. no way you played 30 hours in blue if you didn't catch Pokemon. Yeah, I probably did catch the occasional one. But I never that I was... never paid attention to like type stuff before. So like catching and types was something that you you participated in but you didn't really embrace. Yeah, like I really don't I couldn't tell you if I ever did it. I mean, I must have, but Oh, Where I is now getting thing. it makes a big difference to oh, you? Oh gosh, was I supposed to do this? This is a huge mistake. No, you're supposed to do this now. Okay. I don't want to go on it's, it's a bit of a puzzle, though, but... Hello. Yeah, so I, I think if I may speak for you all, I think Shadow, what he's saying is that the people who are super Pokemon fans that take it way too seriously... They buy both copies of every game that comes out, you know, X and Y, Red and Blue, Sword and Shield, that they're playing it all the time. And the other thing is, this is something I ran into. I don't know if you run into it, Will, but whenever you, if you're a new Pokemon player and you try and talk Pokemon with somebody and they're like, what do you mean you don't know all the types? What do you mean you didn't catch Mew? You didn't beat the Elite Four? Like, it's, it's a very, it can be a very snobbish fan base for newcomers who are coming into the, the Pokemon late and haven't been playing it since they were a kid um is is that kind of the the off puttiness that that you were seeing yeah totally no i will not change why is this guy's this guy's learning he's got five pokemon but they're all the same so kind of that was the mistake he made it's so it's so funny and then you find the right pokemon the right counter and then you just rip through i'm also not playing right now because Barack Obama's just gonna keep rolling. So I literally. Oh, can't. you doing rollout? Can't do gotcha. anything about it. Good for you, buddy. I'm proud of you. You're really taken to this whole Pokemon thing. Yeah, I'm. I'm debating. I think next after this, I'm gonna play Ruby or Sapphire. But I'm debating whether to play Omega or the regular one on my Game Boy. And I think the right answer is just to play Omega, but the like remastered version. Oh, on the Switch. Yeah. No. No, 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 no. You no. mean on the 3DS. You're thinking oh. Diamond and Pearl. Yeah. I didn't realize there was a So there's a 3DS version of Ruby and Sapphire? Yeah. And there's a DS version of Silver and Gold. Man, that's it just gets crazy. Yeah, I was How like going down a rabbit hole are. because there's a there's heart gold and soul silver, but then there's also platinum, which is yeah, is the combination of both of them. So I'm like, what was the point in buying one or the other? What? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's wild. But I think next I'm gonna do Omega Ruby um, on my 3DS. Um, yeah, Shadow. I think it's I think it's totally fine to be a big Pokemon fan. And as long as you're, if you're not snobbish about it, then that's fine. Yeah, it's, also, it's, it's like, just the snobbish fans that are off. -putting. Every fandom that's does all. that. I think I've just encountered it with Pokemon, and that's why it's like sticks out in my brain. I I will also say, you know, as a kid that did not grow up on Nintendo consoles, part of it was like jealousy of the kids who did have that and could play Pokemon, and part of that was like childish like anti-behavior where it's like well i i can't play pokemon but but i i don't want to play pokemon it's for little kids anyways you know and it took a while for me to like back down off of that so by the time when i was in college and i finally had access to nintendo consoles to be able to play pokemon games i was like okay i'm mature enough to realize that was stupid of me i'm gonna i'm gonna give these a shot magnitude nine baby yeah, I'm excited. I get to I get to weld and tap tomorrow for a project my dad Ooh. needs help on. It's exciting. I get to uh, make my next batch of hot sauce tomorrow. Ooh. They've been fermenting since Monday. Menton. Gotta mix them all together. Have Karen toast me up some garlic oil. Put in a little bit of xanthan gum. Holds it all together. Wait, you're not going to toast up your own? Oh, she's just better at it. Oh my yeah, God. this is my third time making a batch of hot sauce. It's like garlic. It's like garlic 
hot sauce because it's it's Fresnos, but this time uh, I had to do more jalapenos than Fresnos because Fresnos are hard to come by in the winter. Oh, I why did I do that? that. <laughs> Sorry, Team Rocket Grunt. Should have been a Team Rocket Brute. Can't get in that room. Man, I may just buy one of these canvas prints off AliExpress. One of the example pictures is just a K-pop, a men's K-pop group that somebody printed a giant canvas print out of <laughs> that's awesome that's pretty funny <gasps> magnemite you look cool do you like being hit by a rock oh my god i missed ow don't confuse me i just i love looking at like these custom prints and then people post pictures of what they wanted printed and they're like it looks great one of them is just somebody went to tuneme.com and did like a fake tune version of themselves. Nice. And the reason why I know it's I know it's tuneme.com because they left the watermark in the image when they got it printed. <laughs> nice. Uh, we got some uh, questions about that uh, hot sauce, Will. Oh, uh, it's not too spicy usually, um, but I, I really don't have that much control over it. Um, because I just I actually this batch I put two habaneros in, so we'll uh, see how that goes tomorrow. So yeah, I'll crack it open tomorrow, um, and then I make all the hot sauce. The nice thing is I can you can save the brine as like a a like uh, watery hot sauce, so you could just like add it to stuff like a little dash of it. They like sprinkle mm -hmm. it on and then mix it together, so it like coats stuff. Um, it's really good. What's if you had to say what the spice is similar to? What would you say in terms of like, is it Taco Bell mild? Is it Frank's? Is it Dave's Insanity? No, it's, it's, so it's not. It's got a little bit of white vinegar in it, but it'll be. I, like, I really don't know how to place it. You know, um, it'll be like spicy hot garlic. Well, uh, I'm talking about like how spicy is it not necessarily flavor yeah um like sriracha yeah probably sriracha maybe a little bit more than sriracha i, I also don't know this time because i'm uh i put two habaneros in it and that's the first time i've done it so oh you normally do one or, or i normally i've never habanero. i've never put them in it's normally you never had spicy food before this I've is your first had, time making yeah. spice it's the yeah, first time having spicy food and you put two ever. up yeah yeah totally uh, I usually do oh. mostly Fresno and a little bit of jalapeno, and this time I had to do mostly jalapeno and a little bit of Fresno. But I will post pictures in the Discord, community Discord, if you would like to see them. Hey, did you see the new Spider-Man yet? No. I should probably do Do you that. care? Do you want to see it? Yeah, I'm very excited to see it. I think I'm going to see it eventually, but I just don't care enough to see it in theaters. Also, the whole, like... I'm not going to spoil it, but people being like, careful of spoilers, like, I'm pretty sure we all know what the big spoiler is, unless something crazy happened in it, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I have no idea, so. Exciting. I, it, I mean, yeah. It's, I hate, I hate MCU fans. I hate them so much. They're awful people. <laughs> See? <laughs> Jesus. I just talking about like toxic fan bases. Yeah, but I don't think all MCU fans are awful. No, but I just wish they had some taste. And yeah, but uh, like, like I'm a big MCU seen... fan, and I'm not an awful person. I don't think you're that big because like a big MCU fan is somebody who like every time somebody's like post like an incredible moment in cinema history, and then they're like post a picture of like Iron Man snapping the Infinity Gauntlet, and it's like. I wasn't even that well done of a moment, <laughs> you know? Right, but that's not... So it's like... But that you're just talking about obnoxious 
MCU fan. Oh yeah, 100%. That's exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm saying regular MCU fans aren't obnoxious. 100% they are. I'm saying I'm an MCU fan and I'm not obnoxious about it. I I'm saying I'm saying that a lot of them are. Right. Uh, okay. Never mind. Uh, I don't you're not an average MCU fan is what I'm saying. Yeah, but I yeah. I'm very much looking forward to the movie and I'm probably I'm going to try to go see it before I leave. Also, like all the people who were going crazy about opening night tickets to Spider-Man, like, did you forget there's a pandemic on and nobody really goes to the theaters and it's actually very easy to get movie tickets now? <laughs> you know, it's like they were like, like, like the marketing campaign was all like, buy your tickets. And then people like bought into that and were like, oh, I got to sell it online and all this stuff. And it's just like, it's just like. No, there's no problem getting tickets opening weekend. It's a pandemic. Nobody's going to the theaters. You can get tickets all you want. It's it's just like I don't know. They take it way too seriously. I, I what I mean by is um I feel like a lot of MCU fans say that their favorite movie of all time is an MCU movie. Which is a very bad opinion to have. Because there are right, a lot but, better movies than that. <laughs> but you can also do that if you're a fan of something. Like, my favorite movie ever isn't the best movie ever, but it's still my favorite movie. But it's at least a good movie, right? Yeah, I mean, objectively. But also, a lot of MCU movies are objectively good movies. Just because you don't like See, them doesn't mean they're bad I movies. Disagree. <laughs> that's where I would disagree. But I'm just saying that's your opinion, man. I think I think it's kind of like Pokemon, where we were talking about if you a lot of MCU fans, like, let that subsume them, and they become... And part of that is their fault. Part of that is the marketing being so aggressive where it's like they know what they have is popular. So there's MCU shirts, there's MCU TV shows, there's MCU movies, there's tie-ins, everything, everywhere, constantly talking about it. And they're just like, yeah, slurp it up, baby. Nothing wrong with MCU. It's the best thing ever. Slurp, 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 you know? Yeah. And at some, it's, at some point it's like, hey, maybe you should step back and look. Yeah, at, I'm not saying uh, what the MCU is doing is good. No, again, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about MCU fans. I know you're talking about MCU fans, but I'm saying they're allowed to like things. And I, MCU movies are, are good, even though if you don't think that. I thought The Matrix was a to... terrible movie, and you like The Matrix. You haven't seen The Matrix. I have seen The Matrix. No, that doesn't count. For the audience, please tell us again how you saw The Matrix. I've also seen The Matrix on a TV. I was playing it up. That's a terrible joke. Also, The Matrix is a good movie. No, I didn't like it. I thought it was really dumb. Uh, anyways, just but my point, point is like, I just think MCU fans are kind of like Pokemon fans where they let it become their entire personality. And then they use that to kind of bludgeon other people and, and anything else within that cultural space to death. You yeah. know, where they're like, all DC movies suck. They're awful. And then they're like, the best cinematic movie ever is Infinity War Endgame. You know, like, it becomes the end-all be-all for everything to them. And it's like, hey, that's not being a good fan. You know, you can appreciate something, you can enjoy something, but don't let it become your entire life. Don't get a pork tattoo before the movie even comes out. You know? Yeah. That's what I mean. That's, that's unhealthy fandom. Oh, Shadow's got a good question. Favorite Christmas movie? Favorite movie based around Christmas or favorite movie to watch during Christmas time? It's the same thing. Why you guys? It's not the, the same question? thing. Why you gotta complicate the How question? How am I complicating it? Is it a movie it's that favorite. is a Christmas answer movie? Answer both of them. Answer both of them. Who cares? Okay. Just answer both. I'm allowed to answer ask. Both, please. My favorite oh, Christmas movie is Hunt for Red October. There. Thank you. Ooh, is that a tradition? I kind of like that tradition. Yeah, it's a tradition. But my favorite uh, actual Christmas movie is the dumb answer is probably Die Hard, but the the right answer is probably one of the animated uh, stop motion ones. Because those are great. Christmas Story is very good. Christmas Story is very uh, I do really like Elf, mostly because I saw it a lot as a kid. Um, I don't know. I feel like... Miracle feel 34th like Street is also real good. 
The original? Yeah. I've never seen the original. I've also never seen It's a Wonderful Life. I've never seen It's a Wonderful Life. It seems like a bad movie. But I do like Jimmy Stewart. Yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like it's so hyped up that I don't want to watch it, but now I feel like I really should. Um, do I go on that pad or do I not go on that pad? Die Hard's great. Home Alone, Home Alone's funny, but I don't think watching Home Alone every... I'm not, like, I'm not crazy about Lampoon's uh, Christmas Vacation. I don't think I feel I've like ever seen perfect... it. It's funny, but I feel like it's the perfect cable movie where if you happen to be at an in-laws house or whatever and they have they have it on the TV, then it's like, okay, I'll just sit here watching this with the family. But it's not something I would deliberately watch every Christmas. This is another, like, it's not deliberately Christmas. And I usually, I've done this past two years, I didn't do it this year, but I, I'll usually watch through all the Harry Potter movies starting in November because they're very, like, Halloween and Christmas. They have those portions in most of the movies. So it, like, feels timely, you know? Let's go backwards a bit. Wait, so you have seen The Matrix? I have seen The Matrix, yes. On when an did iPod you see Touch. It? In high school. And this you bad haven't movie. seen it on a TV. I've pro I've seen bits and pieces on a TV. I would I would recommend rewatching it, because I'm in the middle of the rewatch. No, no. I don't actually think it's a bad movie. I was just trying to prove a point. First movie's pretty good though. Second movie, honestly, better than I remember. I watched Animatrix the other night. Do you know? Do you know what Animatrix is? Yeah, it's an animated movie, right? 3D animated. Is mm. it 3D? No. It's basically. It, it came out between Reloaded and Revelations, and it's they they went out and they sourced a whole bunch of short films. It's like nine or ten short films made by different creators in the Matrix universe. And so is all those put together. Um, some of them are not very good. It's kind of weird, like they front loaded it. But the f honestly, the first two, which is called the second Renaissance part one and part two, which is basically just like a, it's kind of like a history lesson on how, how the like humanity and the robots came to be, like how we went from humans to the matrix, the state of the matrix. I remember it being very good. I watched it again the other night. It's so, so good. It's incredible. Like, it's very, it's, it, it blows my mind how good it is. It's really, really good. There's a couple other short films in it that are good. And then there's ones in it that are not good. Like, there's one that's just like a weird, like, nerd fetishism where it's just like, we're going to make these two hot people, like, fight, but they start undressing each other while they're oh, fighting. Oh, yeah. And, and that's the one that ties directly into the lore of the movies. And so it's, like, it's like the most important one, quote-unquote, but it's also, like... But, my God, that... That second Renaissance one is just... It's just so well done. It's incredible. I feel like you would love it. So here's my recommendation. Watch The Matrix... And then whether you liked it or not, you need to at least watch uh, the first two parts of the Animatrix, which I think are like 20 minutes total. And then you don't have to watch the rest of it. If you like it, the Matrix or the Animatrix, then watch two and three and maybe even watch the new one that's coming out on Wednesday. But I would say at a bare minimum, watch the first one and the first two shorts from the Animatrix because they're incredible. They're, they're, it's, some of the, it's like some of the best like pieces of animation I've ever seen. Like animation pacing story, just just insane. It's so good. It's crazy. It. Yeah, it's Ooh. it's incredible. Polar Express. That's I like that movie. It's not bad. The book's really good, but movie's pretty enjoyable for a Christmas movie. Wait, that's the one that has like Tom really Hanks bad un uncounty valley in it. Yeah, it's a bit like when it came out, it wasn't so bad, but looking back now, it is kind of rough. I I haven't seen it. I've seen bits and pieces of it because my nephew and niece, they started getting into it for the last year or so. They were always like, put on Polar Express. And my dad was like, it's it's so bad that my dad brought it up to me. He's like, have you, have you seen Polar Express? And I was like, no, I've heard about it. And he goes, it looks awful. And like, my dad's not into movies or animation or anything, but even he could tell he was like, 
it just looks really, really creepy. <laughs> yeah. The thing I like about it is they very much like stayed with the um the like sort of detached as far as I remember it, like the detached narrator of the book where you're like you're pretty much like observing what's happening. You're not really invested. There's not, like not an incredible through line. Um No, I lost to a Team Rocket grunt. Oh my god, Will Smith made his own eggnog. You have you never done that before? Have you made your own eggnog? Yeah, I've done it like seven or eight times. How do you make it? You whip egg whites and then you whip yolks separately and then you fold them together and add sugar. Oh, there's no dairy in eggnog? Um oh we also fold in heavy cream. So uh there you could add it, but yeah. I'm not saying I don't trust you, but I'm I'm looking up an eggnog recipe just to see if that's the same way other people do it as well. Yeah, my um, uncle did it recipe. every year when we were kids. And so the past like oh. four or five years I've helped him. Yeah, I've only had it store bought. This is this is whole milk and heavy cream. It's and bourbon. Yeah. So we add bourbon. It's Ooh. it is nothing like what you drink at the store. It's completely different. Because at the store, it's weird. It's like it's like heavy flavored milk in a way. Yeah. I love egg hood eggnog is the best eggnog from the store homemade it's more like you're drinking like a super whipped like you know whipped consistency of like a latte it's yeah. like mostly air you're pretty much drinking that because it's like separates as you drink it so like because mm -hmm. you you can only full and it's it's super not super hard to make but it's pretty hard to make because you you get any i think if you get any of the egg whites any of the yolk in the egg whites it'll it they won't whip Oh, gotcha. Yeah, it's like a whole thing. Give me give me one second, I'll be right back. Give him a second, cause he'll be right back. Wait, why am I going in here? I already beat this. I'm not going here, I'm going to the other place. Oh, it brought me to this Poke Center because I technically didn't go to the Saffron City one. I was confused. Hello, sir. Hello, twin. Hello, scary. Sorry, I was checking to see. I know I had a liquor that I put in the sangria, but it was brandy. It wasn't bourbon. But I, I may end up making some of this. Yeah, it's good. Because we got a stand mixer, which makes the whipping a whole lot easier. Yeah, we used to do it in like a bowl this big. Because it was for a party. I'll probably see. The thing is, I don't think there's a lot of people that like eggnog. Uh, no, you don't. But again, have to boil we've only. It. But again, we've always had it from my, from the store. So, like this recipe does six to seven cups. I'm not sure if I want to make that many. That yeah. much. I'll be cut it in half. It's good. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't prefer it. Like they're very different things. Like if I want eggnog, I'm getting hood golden eggnog. That's delicious. So I, I think Shadow is right. You don't, you don't boil the mix, but. You have to heat it until it gets 160 because the eggs are not pasteurized. Oh, yeah. See, we didn't do that. That's you what don't... this recipe says. Yeah, that's also like a like warning you have to put in. You don't want people to get filmed. No. Yeah, so this is... Um... So after you beat the eggs, etc., you combine the milk, heavy cream, and nutmeg. Bring it just to a boil. Yeah. And then you're going to temper the hot mixture into the egg and sugar mixture slowly so it doesn't cook it. And then return everything to the pot and cook until the mixture reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's the... It's not really pasteurizing, but I think that's the yeah, I should, food safety check. I should send you the recipe that we use. I mean, it doesn't have any of that, but... This looks very similar to what you're, what you're, what yeah. you're describing, though. I, I don't mean to offend you, but this is an Alton Brown recipe. No, no, that's fine. I think that's just one of those things you have to say so people don't get sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's but not I, saying it's rare to get we, salmonella from eggs, but the reason you shouldn't eat, we, like, raw cookie dough and stuff is because of the flour, not even because of the egg. But we, we do this with um, with ice cream. When we do the egg custard style ice cream, you have to you have to heat the mixture to pasteurize it and then, and then temper it back down. 
before you before you pour the ice cream into the ice cream maker. Yeah. So it, it's not. It's if you do it right, it doesn't change the consistency. Consistency. That's what I'm saying. It's just a safety precaution. So you don't you don't have to do it. Is what is my point. I hear you saying that, but we are also live. So as a safety precaution, you have to do it. No, you, who cares? <laughs> I'm not it's, saying it's, not to it do it. literally give you... Because if you're not, then you're basically eating raw U.S. eggs, which are not pasteurized. And there's a high risk of salmonella with that. So... You, sh you should absolutely... Unless, unless you're... No, I to. Like, I think in Europe, and I know in Japan, they pasteurize their eggs before the store. Does yeah. the U.S. Seat not? Because isn't that why they have to be... Uh... Seatbelt's a safety precaution. You don't have to wear your seatbelt. I mean, you legally have to wear your seatbelt. You don't legally have to pasteurize your egg. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so you can still make the eggnog. I don't think there's much of a difference. It's just the extra step to pasteurize it. Is there a reason the United States, we refrigerate eggs... I think we're just too lazy to pasteurize, but let me double check. Why doesn't the U.S.? Because eggs from a chicken you don't have to refrigerate, but we refrigerate egg. Okay, here we go. Well, I know once you refrigerate refrigerate eggs, you have to keep them refrigerated. As someone who used oh, to have chicken. In the United States, it's more than a food safety recommendation that eggs be refrigerated. It's the law. Okay, wait, sorry. Oh, here it is. Okay, so so the FDA, I'm sorry, the USDA, the US Department of Agriculture, requires that eggs be sanitized before they go to consumers in the US, which means washing, which also removes the natural coating of the egg, which makes the eggshell porous, which means they're then vulnerable to salmonella, etc. So then you have to refrigerate them. In other parts of the world, such as Europe, uh, authorities approach the threat of salmonella quite differently. They're not required to go through the washing, which leaves the protective coating on the egg, and therefore it's okay for them to be sold at room temperature. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when we had eggs from chickens, you would just leave them out. But once you refrigerate them, I think you have to keep them. Yes. And, and it makes sense. It says here, a cool egg at room temperature can sweat, which then facilitates the growth of bacteria on the outside of the shell, which is porous. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look up. Pasteurize. I am not finding what I want. Let me keep looking. Um. Can you get pasteurized eggs in the United States? Uh, I, I believe so. I'm looking here that says all egg products sold in the U.S. that are pasteurized are done per USDA rule. So it doesn't mean that they have to be, but they can. Because I'm just wondering, because, I mean, my uncle probably made it for close to 20 years and no one ever got salmonella. So I'm wondering if he buys pasteurized eggs to use. He could. It's probably also a small risk of salmonella, but yeah. Also, would alcohol kill salmonella? Um... I don't probably not. And there's probably not enough concentration in there. Yeah. Well, my aunt would see to that. I'm looking at US pasteurized eggs. Oh wait. USDA says that all egg products are pasteurized as required by the USDA. They've been rapidly heated and held at a minimum required temperature for a specific time to destroy bacteria. Further cooking is not required. Certain commodities, such as freeze-dried products, 
imitation egg products and egg substitutes are not considered egg products and therefore they're not necessarily pasteurized. Wait, so all US eggs are pasteurized? We have come full circle. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's wild. See, th that's according to the USDA. But I keep finding these articles that say, like, some are pasteurized. Like, I, I'm on the US, I'm on the FDA website. Here we go. Um. I'm still looking. This is crazy. I, 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 I mean, the closest I've gotten is the USDA website saying that all egg products are pasteurized, but I... You've ever seen the you ever seen the eggs that have the P on the egg? Has like a like a like a tattoo of P. They stamp the P on the egg like a pink P. Oh, is that pasteurized? I I oh. think that means pasteurized. Also, Shadow, thanks for the follow. I I got the email yeah, from on Twitch, but I, I just realized this Poco Will on OBS doesn't have Streamlabs, so I need to add that. But thank you oh, for the. Oh, we didn't get there. We didn't get the the thank you stranger. I, why would the USDA website say all of them are pasteurized? Oh, yeah. Big Egg's going to come get you. We already have blockchain after us. And the Forza Horizon people. Or Forza 7 people. Do I go down or up? I, oh, goodness, man. I can't. Q bone? Well, like cute bone, am I right? No, oh, that sounds gross. Never mind. Whoa, buddy! Okay, I, I found another USDA website. Let's see what this one says. We're going down a rabbit hole here. What Forza game was it that. Was it Forza. Five that we duo review duo. Oh, the seven, I think it was seven. Yeah, four to seven. We were doing a, a video of, and it crashed while Ian was playing it, and we were bad mouthing the game. Yeah, it was at the end. I was like, I was like, we're running down from this. I'm like, it's just not that good. It's got problems, and it's just not. And then it crashed, and it was like, ah, oh, they hurt us. That was one of the first things we ever did together. It's on our very YouTube channel. Was it? Yeah, I feel like it was one of the last. Uh, what was the fir the first, first one we did was uh, Absolver. Absolver, the game I which means I we have finished. to play C Sifu. Sifu yeah, we looks have to good because because honestly, Absolver had some cool combat mechanics. It was just I don't know why they chose that aesthetic for their world because it was so like empty, boring. Yeah, and it was brown. trying to be like Dark Soulsy. So weird. Yeah. Oh my god, this is disgusting. You ready for this? You probably already knew this. How does salmonella infect eggs? Bacteria can be on the outside of a shell egg. That's because the egg exits the hen bodies through the same passageways as feces is excreted. It's true. Cloacia. Ugh. Cloaca? Cloaca. Oh man, that hurt. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to disagree with the USDA and say that eggs in the US do not have to be pasteurized. I don't know why their website says so differently, but I do not see the P on a lot of eggs. But I feel like I think if you go to like Whole Foods, etc., you can find pasteurized eggs. Did you beat this? Um, I'm going to tell you something, Will. I got stuck in this tower because it got too confusing. So let me know if you need the cheat sheet on how to get through this tower quickly. Like what the right path is. I'm just fighting everyone. Okay, that's fair. And then I think once we're done with this tower, we can uh, we can call it for tonight. This guy's a jerk. I did the first floor, and then I went to the eighth floor, and now I'm on the seventh floor. So if you would like to track my progress, feel free. Okay, let me go to Saint. Let me go to SaintHalucha.com. Okay. Oh, this is crap. I really want to go to the, the... It was the guide that had the good stuff. Yeah, PDF. Are you going to... Look, I know Karen wants to watch The Matrix. So are you, are you just going to... Are you going to watch The Matrix this week? Yeah, maybe. I, I'm going away this week, so probably not, to be honest. So watch it with watch it with Zach. No, oh, he hates that movie. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. Did he watch it on an iPod Touch, too? I think so. You disgust me. Oh, you mean the coffee beans that, that the fisher cat eats and then poops out? But that's only one type of coffee. That's not all coffee beans are made from poop. I mean, I wish. Oh, this has you take a different... Um, do you like fire? Oh, I burned you. Yeah, just let me know when you get lost. This this is an area where it's not it's not very clear where you're supposed to go. Yeah, I so guess you kind of go around a bit dealing with trainers, but then you hit a point where you're like, wait, where am I supposed to be going? Just not gonna bite today, bud. And then remind me, I'm going to give you your next checkpoint after this, because there, there is some stuff that you that you can do before the gym in Lavender Town. And I think you might as well do it to get yourself some. Uh... George is trying to call me right now, but I am busy. Tell him to heck off. Oh, you say coffee beans are partially digested? No, the That's the it. Fisher Cat one. Oh. I think specifically the Fisher Cat one. Yeah, I don't think right. all why coffee can't they breeds. just like why can't they just soak it in acid or something? Because it's like a it's tradition, you know. You pick up the the poop and you put it in your coffee. They get it right from the tap. That's like that's like close to a turducken situation. Like I you think feed it the was, cat yeah. coffee, then you kill the cat, boil the cat, the water becomes coffee. I think right? it was one of those things that the cats the the reason they found out is because the cat's stomach don't digest them. So when they were walking around and just finding coffee beans, they're like, "What the frick?" And then they realized they could shove them in cats. And although Fisher cats aren't really cats, so. Aren't they weasels? Fish. Are they called fisher cats? Yeah. 
crickets? F I S H? F I C H? Oh, yeah, those are not cats. Yeah, they're weasels, right? Or possums or something. I'm gonna look up Fisher Cat Coffee. It's great. You walk into the store and you just lift their tail and it just pours out. Kidding. I'm trying to find like a Wikipedia article on this. Oh, see, I think you're wrong. I don't think it's a Fisher cat. It's Civet cat. Coffee. Civet cat. That's what it is. Thank you. You're right. You're right. I was... So the Civet cat eats ripe coffee cherries and after it is digested, the fruity pulp excretes the coffee beans. It's praised for being sweet, smooth, and earthy. People also praise me for that. Some, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at a YouTube video of how they make. You just want to see the cat's butt. I kind of do. You want to hear this stinger? Sure. I'm going to play it for you. Here we go. Now, all chefs have secret ingredients in their favorite recipes. Of course, I put garlic on everything. But the secret to the world's most expensive coffee may make you think twice about your kitty litter. Not bad. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Not bad. ABC News. Not bad. Oh, can you still there's hear a me? quest in World of Warcraft. Yeah, I can still hear you. That you have to go around flagging turds for coffee beans. That's hilarious. God. I'll let ABC's Glory Riviera. I don't want to hear her anymore, Ian. I'm sorry. I was playing that. It was weird. You can hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear her? No. Okay, sorry. I clicked the wrong button in voice meter. And then I asked if you could hear me. And it was weird. It was you could hear me. I couldn't hear the video. It was piping directly to you. <laughs> I don't know how. Voice meter's a mystery to me, honestly. Yeah. I don't I, know sometimes how it I try to it. think about it as like physical cables and I just get confused. It's weird. It took me like two weeks to figure out the audio routing in um at the studio and I like wrote it down like four or five times and I still don't know how it works. Yeah. Those Pandarens. This is $90 a cup. Yeah, because you got to make the cat poop it. Copy Luwak. Ugh. Try it again. I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, it just doesn't seem healthy to me. You know? You know? I'm sure it's plenty healthy. I mean, it probably is, but still. Uh, my starter Pokemon is in the computer because I was over leveling him. And I was told that was a bad thing to do. Don't, don't listen to the, to David or whoever it was. Was it Halucha? It was Halucha. I, well, here's why. If you're good at, if you're really good at Pokemon, then yeah, you don't want to overlevel your starter. But if you're not great at Pokemon, it's good to have one, po at least one Pokemon that's overleveled that you can just hammer your way through fights with. Yeah, but I was relying on them 
too much. Oh yeah, that's too much. Uh, by the way, do you do you have EXP share yet? You probably no. you've been catching Pokemon like Cray Cray, haven't you? I only have thirty nine. Oh well, you're gonna you're gonna be there soon. You're gonna be there very soon. See, this is a poison ground. Oh no, it's not. It's a normal move, but apparently it's really good. Yeah, but you don't want to get rid of cut because you're using that. I didn't say I was getting rid of cut. He has a flying move. That's crazy. Who has? Oh yeah. I could pro honestly probably get rid of Peck. Oh, there's a rocket launch in 50 minutes. I'm probably going to be in bed. Yeah, get rid of Peck. Fortunately, we can't really see it from our house. We got too many trees, etc. Too many trees. Yeah, level 70 Charizard, level 30 everything else. That's how you do it. Actually, my starter is one of my least level now because I got to this point where I was like, I need to level up this guy for that, this guy for that, and I, my starter just kind of got level by, left behind. So he's like, I think he's like 41, and everybody else is like 45 to 48. This guy fought. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can we? Can I what? Can I give you the shortcut? It's yeah, not a straight shortcut. It's it's like these are the eight steps to get through this. Okay. Uh, I mean, I probably. Yeah, I'm gonna have to die and come back through here anyways. So. Well, how about you go heal? While I pull this up. Because uh, it's gonna take me a little bit to pull it up anyways. Can I use this elevator? <gasps> I can use this elevator. Yeah, you can go all the way to the first floor. Oh, there's eleven floors. And then I guess I can come back here in my off time and just uh, do all the other stuff. Actually, yeah, if you want to, but I'm also going to give you four. I think it's three or four routes that you can go clear in the off time. Yeah, so I'll probably do all of that. <laughs> uh, Shadow, I want to hear your, your take. We're playing Fire Red right now. This is Will's like first real true end to end beat the game Pokemon. What do you think his next one should be? From all gens, all gens are open, all remakes, remasters, originals. What do you think he should play? Okay, you need to take the elevator to the fifth floor. fifth floor okay you're then going to um head left i don't know if you fought that guy already but fight him if you need to i could just go around him um head south oh crap that guy's on me Oh. oh, monotype runs. Should I was talking about monotype runs where you you pick a single type and make a team out of those. Wow. And then go through the game. That's crazy. Heart gold, soul silver. Got both those on the 3DS. That's that's Yeah, good... I was only leaning towards Omega Ruby because I played Ruby as a kid. Um but honestly, I wouldn't mind playing Heart Gold Soul Silver. Those 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 are DS. Yeah. And I, I know we are officially saving Black for next year. Yes, we're gonna play Black and White next year. Yes, Black and White. On on stream. So this is gonna be so off stream. Off stream. We'll figure out his next one. Heart Gold sounds pretty good. Okay, oh, so. You're going to enter the teleporter 
and then take the teleporter back, and that lets you down that hallway. If that makes sense. Yeah. Now head east. I got a card key card. Okay, so now go to the third floor. Oh, oh that guy's messing me. I mean, it's okay to fight him. No, I'd rather do all this on my off time. I got a, I got a flight coming up. So elevator, third floor. Um, you're gonna take a right, and then immediately go south, or I guess just go straight south. And yeah, if I get that guy. Bump, 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 bump. It's good to hear about black and white. I've heard a lot of good things. I've never touched them. We'll probably... I think we're planning to do that next November, December time frame. Yeah. Because I think it works with the holidays. Gives you time to grind. We don't have to focus on heavy stream ideas because we can just do black and... Just so yeah, tune in streams. in March where we give up and we start doing it then. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to sleep. I I did the thing where I stayed up late last night till midnight. I went to bed, but then I woke up at my normal time of like six six thirty. Oh, it's the worst. Yeah, so I, j I just can't really sleep in nowadays. My body's too used to even even though I don't have to wake up till eight for work, I still wake up at like six thirty seven every day. Okay. All right, take that left. Go through that left, left. Where are you going? That was a legit. This bottom left? No, no, no. Up, 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 up. Left. Oh, you said through the, the doorway. Through the doorway. Go, go talk to the door. Oh, I didn't know. Sorry. I didn't know I could go through a door. Yeah, that's kind of the confusing thing. Okay. Uh, skip. Go to the next door. Oh, this music got epic. Oh, I can just open all these doors now. Oh, wait, sorry, you're supposed to go in that, in that, uh... This one? Go in that first teleporter, yeah. Is that Gribsby? Yeah, you gotta fight him. Oh, uh, shit. Um, so Shadow, I, you, you mentioned fan -made Pokemon games. What are your favorite ROM hacks? to play we were looking at some there's like there's like really weird ones like dbz and league of legends ones but I, i'm curious like which ones you would you think are worth actually touching i've also heard there's genuinely pretty good whole cloth pokemon games that people have made oh that have been made i can see that because i was trying to think of why people are upset with pokemon right now in a way and i think it's because they kind of they're trying new things like with pokemon let's go and with sword and shield but they're not doing a great job of implementing these new mechanics and so it's like it's 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 a it's a balancing don't act kill between don't kill pleasing don't. your existing oh. fans good boy nice venusaur yes Burn him up. Burn him up. Cute little tough boy. Oh, you're so Ugh. gross. I want the f I want I just, the the fairy from Zelda to come out of the middle of that thing. <laughs> I just I like No. Ugh. Like, come on, wake part up. of me is like 
part of me is like, oh, cool. It's a, uh, part of me is like, oh, cool. It's like a, a Pokemon with a plant on his back. But then you think about like looking at the back and seeing the plant sprouting out of the flesh. And it's a nightmare, folks. Why don't you switch to... I was going to switch, or wow. I could just heal him. Yeah. Hope he it's, wakes up. It's half and half. You could switch to the water type. Yeah, that's and true. Let me just see if this will... Or is bug effect against water? I can't remember. Put it, I put it away. Because sometimes I like to switch to something that's not going to get hurt too much while I'm healing the better guy. Grass. Oh, don't switch to the water guy. Grass is doubly effective against water. That's my mistake. Oh. No, don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. Oh, I hate sleep moves. They're so dumb. I, I noticed this, this guy's level 40. I feel like the the guide that I'm there's a conflict between the Saint Halucha guide and the actual printed guide here as to when you are supposed to do this and I think the printed guide is right yeah you told me to get everyone to like 35 right uh, Damn. yeah And that's partially yeah, so my I... fault because you said that and then I looked up Pokemon Tower and I was like, oh, I don't need to get to 35, but I didn't realize you were taking this into account. Oh, that's some good info shadow on the, on the Pokemon Rot Max. Pokemon Gaia. Yeah, maybe just wipe this party. We'll call the stream here, and I'll give you the four routes that you can grind on a bit. I think the St. Halucha guide is wrong here. It has it out of order. The printed guide has things that you should do before you come here. Yeah, that I didn't even look at the better. strategy guide, the St. Halucha guide, because I... I... Yeah. I just I'm thought we were I doing both Pokemon of Tower up, this episode. Yeah. No, I've never lost to my rival. Does your Graveler have um, self-destruct? It's kind of too late to use it, but... Um, I don't think he does. Oh, he does. Oh, he does. Do you fight again, or is he just gone? I, I'm i not sure. I think there are parts where you can lose, and it's okay. But there's other parts where you have to beat him to keep going. And I don't know which one this is, because I I beat him. But at the same time, I, did, I skipped this somehow. So I came back later when I was super leveled up. So I think, I think we call the stream here, but let me give you your next checkpoint. I would like you to get to Fuchsia City. Fuchsia City. Which is to the west, but also, if you pu actually pull up the town map, if you can, we'll take a look at it. Okay, so if you head... Um... Yeah, so you can do routes 12, 13, 14, and 15. So I think if you head east out of, yeah, 12, 
13, 15, I think 14, 14 is, yeah, 14 is right here. east of Diglett's. Oh, yeah, that's 14. So you could do all of those okay, and get to Fuchsia City. You can also go back and grind the Pokemon. I mean, not the Pokemon Tower, but the the fight there. And you can go ahead and beat your rival and clear out that if you want to. You want me to clear out Sylphco? You don't have to. But if you get to a point I'm where saying you think I'm a, you can I'm take it out, to. you're allowed to. So yeah. next episode, we are starting with Fuchsia City. Yes. Okay. Or, that works or finishing because out the, the hideout. This won't be until I'm just saying next that because, Tuesday. Yeah. I'm just saying that because you have to get to um, probably level 35 minimum to take on your rival and beat him. So, yeah. Cool. Super. Okay, I saved. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. Shadow Dragon, thank you so much for hanging out with us uh, and keeping us up to date on the cat, cat coffee poop. Uh, that was great of you. Um, oh, let me know how my audio did because I put a delay on it to make it line up better. Uh, and I totally forgot to even test that. So hopefully it worked out pretty well. It looks like it's working out pretty well. So hopefully it did. Um, anyways, uh, we'll be back. Oof. Tuesday, Ian's doing something TBD. TBD. Thursday will be a pre-recorded local chat. Next Saturday, another Ian TBD. No, that's Christmas. I think another. Yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I don't think we're going to stream. That's Christmas Eve, Christmas night. So yeah, not going to do it. And then, um, next Tuesday, I will be back from Utah and, uh, We'll be playing some more Pokemon. We'll see how far I get. Maybe I'll be at Fuchsia City and uh, have level 70 Pokemon. So who knows? Um, it could happen. Anyways, folks, thanks for tuning in. And we will see you all uh, at some point. This isn't local chat. I don't have to do the sign off. Bye. It's a long time. Bye.